It's Friday, May 27, 2011, and you are watching This Week in Linux News. This week saw a lot of big news, so let's go ahead and get started. The Fedora project announced this week the availability of Fedora 15 Love Lock. I've done a couple of videos on the alpha and the beta, still planning to do one on the final release, but just haven't gotten around to it yet. But if you'd like to see what it looks like up to this point, up to the final release, but not quite there yet, go ahead and check out the alpha and beta videos that I did on it. Linux Mint version 11 also came out this week, so if you are an Ubuntu 11.04 user but you're not quite a fan of Unity and you want that Linux Mint interface that you know and love, definitely give that a look. I mentioned in a previous video that Zenwalk version 7 is now available. If you recall, Zenwalk is a Slackware-based distribution with XFCE on top of it. Well, this week, Zenwalk 7's GNOME edition came out. And the last distro I'd like to mention, Bodhi Linux version 1.1.0 is now available. Bodhi Linux is based on Ubuntu 10.04 with a lot of updates, including the latest, greatest version of the kernel, which just released this week, version 2.6.39. So if you're interested in trying out, again, the latest, greatest kernel on top of a long-term support support version of Ubuntu with Enlightenment as the desktop environment, Bodhi Linux is definitely a good place to start. And that's enough as far as distro release news goes, let's move into the general Linux news and software updates. Speaking of the latest greatest version of the kernel, as I mentioned, 2.639 became available this week. And with that out the door, Linus has already started talking about the next version, which logically should be 2.6.40. However, he claims that something in his head has told him to move on to the next version. He didn't know if he was going to go with 2.8 or 3.0. The more that he's talked about it, the more it's starting to sound like we're going to have a Linux version 3.0 within the next couple of months. Now there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason as to exactly why this is going to happen. A lot of people are speculating it's because Linux is officially moving into its third decade of production, of development, so why not move the version number up to 3.0 to signify that? There are some other people speculating that we've been on the 2.whatever and specifically the 2.6 versions for so long that a lot of manufacturers, a lot of software developers have been getting kind of lazy in terms of it. So putting out another major release might stimulate some more development and make people start wanting to do more work for Linux. One way or the other, it shouldn't be a huge difference. It'll basically be the next version of the kernel 2.6.40 that'll just be moving to a new version number. But one thing that has been mentioned about the 2.640 or 3.0 kernel, whichever one it turns out to be, one thing that is kind of cool that's going to be included is the Microsoft Connect driver, the open source one the community came up with. So if you do have a Connect, whenever this version does become available, you will have a native open source driver available in the kernel. In some software update news, this week Miro version 4.0 became available. Up to this point, Miro has basically been for watching video-based RSS feeds, podcasts, things of that nature, with a little bit of limited media management. With this update, however, they added the ability to connect to different stores, like the Amazon MP3 store and the Google Marketplace. They've added the ability to connect to and sync to a lot of different devices, including your Android-based phones and tablets. By the way, if I had not mentioned it before, it is entirely possible using Miro to subscribe to YouTube feeds, such as This Week in Linux, or you can subscribe to other video feeds, such as the Blip TV feed. I do have one of those as well, thisweekinlinux.blip.tv slash RSS. Sorry about that, had to do a little bit of a plug there. In other software update news, this week Firefox version 5 beta became available, and this beta is available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. One of the big new features about Firefox 5 so far is the addition of CSS animations, a feature created by Apple. This allows web developers to use keyframes to track CSS-based animations, should make it a little bit more interesting for HTML5 in the future, maybe give developers a reason to start moving more in that direction. Additionally, the Android version of Firefox 5 is going to have a Do Not Track feature that you can turn on to keep advertising from watching your location, from watching what you're doing, all sorts of things like that, so that they can't put out those targeted advertisements to you. Although from the Ars Technica article I've been reading, it appears that Do Not Track flag has not been industry accepted yet, so it may not be all that useful yet. Anyway, moving things along, as I mentioned earlier this week, late last week, whatever, Mego version 1.2 came out last week. Mego conference was this week, and they were already talking about Mego version 1.3. And one of the big features they're touting about this new version that should be coming in the next few months is Wayland. Wayland, the display manager, the replacement for the Xorg server. So apparently when Mego 1.3 releases in October, the tablet interface may actually be powered by Wayland. I don't know about you, but that definitely makes me want to try out Mego again. I will probably take a look at 1.2 when I do get a little bit of time. 
In some other software update news, this week KDE SC version 4.7's beta became available. In this new version, Dolphin has been updated with a slightly more updated, more improved user interface. OpenGL ES 2.0 is now supported and used in KWIN. And KDM, the display manager, actually plays well with Grub 2 now. So when you're telling your system to reboot, you can tell it to reboot to another Linux installation if you've got that set up in your Grub 2. And since we're talking about desktop environment updates, this week there were quite a few updates to GNOME Shell, GNOME Shell's extensions and everything. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but there's a tool for GNOME Shell called the GNOME Tweak Tool that sits on top of it, allows you to make some changes to it, such as adding back the minimize and maximize buttons, turning the desktop back into an actual desktop, a bunch of things like that, changing fonts and whatnot. However, there was an update to that this week, and now it allows the user to enable or disable extensions through the GNOME Tweak Tool. And speaking of that, more and more extensions are becoming available. WebUpdate.org has a list of a bunch of new extensions that are available now. They've got a weather applet, a media player extension, a way to disable the accessibility icon that sits up there all the time that a lot of people just don't use. And there's even one to add a button to the activities window so you can actually brand it with your own distribution now. Before you just had that activities button in the upper left hand corner up there and it didn't have anything on it. So now you can put the Arch Linux logo, the Ubuntu logo, Fedora, whatever other one you want to put on there. There's also an extension to allow you to switch themes very easily through the graphical interface. So that's very nice to see. When I get a little time, I'm going to try to make a video showing off all the new features of GNOME 3 and GNOME Shell, especially a lot of the extensions because there are so many of them that are very, very useful. But that's enough talk about software updates and desktop environment updates. Let's go ahead and move on to the Android news to wrap things up. This week, Barnes & Noble made a very interesting announcement, in my opinion. They're going to be putting out a 6-inch touchscreen Nook. Now, that may sound pretty similar to the Nook color that's already on the market. However, this is a 6-inch touchscreen e-ink display. It's got 2 gigs of storage. It's going to be running Android 2.1. Like I said, it's e-ink, so it's black and white only. However, if the Nook color has taught us anything, it will be broken wide open within a very short amount of time, and it should have the full tablet interface before too long. I will almost guarantee it. It starts shipping on June 10th for a price of $139. So are you interested in something like that? I definitely love my Nook e-reader and for the price, I could see that being very worthwhile. I don't see it mentioning anything about 3G, so I don't know, I'm kind of up in the air there. In other Android news, and this is actually kind of a big story here, this week it was sort of officially but unofficially announced through HTC's Facebook page that they will no longer be locking the bootloaders on their new devices. Of course, locked bootloaders are becoming more and more common, so to see a company like HTC step up, take a response, make a response to what the community is saying and say, we are opening things up for you, that's a huge two thumbs up for me. Thank you, HTC. And in a bit of news that I feel like I've been talking about for months and months, because I think I have, Verizon says they are officially releasing the Gingerbread update for the Droid X today, the 27th of May. Hopefully you will start receiving it today, tonight, sometime, hopefully tonight, uh, if not then, within the next couple of days. So definitely be checking your device for an over-the-air update if you're on the stock firmware and not rooted, etc, etc, ad nauseum. I'm going to be checking it myself. I've checked about a dozen times already and have not seen a thing yet. But like I said, it should roll out hopefully within the next few days. You can always manually check by going into your system settings, hitting about, hitting system update, and then you'll see if you got a new version or not. And the last bit of news I'd like to mention, on the Team Mojang YouTube channel, Mojang being the company behind the massively popular game Minecraft, they released a video showing off Minecraft Portable Edition, Pocket Edition, not sure exactly which one they're calling it, running on the Xperia Play. This is an Android-based device from Sony. Now, I don't know all the details on this yet, but it does appear to be running very smoothly. Android being Java-based, it does only make sense that Java-based games should work very well in it. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be an Xperia Play exclusive or if it's going to be coming to all Android-based devices. Hopefully, it's not Play exclusive because why bring it to one and not to everyone? But that makes me curious. How many of you guys would be interested in paying for a copy of Minecraft to run on your Android phone or your Android tablet? Personally, I definitely wouldn't mind paying a couple of bucks for it, especially if it could connect to existing Minecraft servers. But anyway, that's all I've got for you. I've got to leave town here very shortly, so I just thought I'd give you this hopefully quick update. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That's all though. See you next time. Bye.